hi, I guess I should introduce myself. You know, I'm, I'm Brandon. I am uh, Brandon Clay. I am a junior in undergrad at Center College uh, in Kentucky. Um, and I am an aspiring filmmaker. And I watched Monster Pies in 2020 during uh, lockdown. And it really inspired me. And I, I wrote about it for my film class that I'm taking right now. Uh, and I sent it to, to Lee. Is, do you want me to call you Lee? Yeah. My name. Awesome. <laughs> so so I, uh, I sent it to Lee. And, uh, you know, Lee and I have been in touch. And now I get to interview the director of one of my favorite films. So, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So as the 10-year anniversary is coming up, I'm going to be interviewing you, asking you about some awesome uh you know some some questions that i've prepared um that i'm i'm curious as i want to get to know a little bit more about you uh about the film and uh just about directing and producing yeah well that's awesome um yeah it's our 10 year anniversary of when we started rolling you know digital film to um and we did it on, i remember doing it on um halloween and i did it in my friend's backyard and yeah we just we were like let's just get started and it was a probably about a week before the actual big thing happened like big production happened but we just did this one scene it's the opening scene with the two kids playing with the mud and um yeah so there you go that's what we did 10 years ago this so it's coming up but i think i'm going to try and release this video on halloween so it's a smack bang on the anniversary so that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have I have ten questions prepared. Um, that's I, if that's too long, I can cut down some. That's good. I've made a tea with caffeine, so I can because it's it's this is my first midnight interview, so I'm gonna do it. Well, I am. I'm super excited. I guess uh, to start off, uh, I wanted you know I read through your IMDb page and uh, the page for the film. And so according to the IMDb page, uh, Monster Pies is based on a short story you wrote when you were 15 years old. Yeah, it was just a story I wrote for like, oh, you know, I'd like to see Romeo and Juliet with two boys. And, 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 and um, it was just before the Baz Luhrmann film had come out. Um, it was 95. So when that came out, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like he's, he didn't do two boys, but he, he's doing something modern. And he was an Australian director, so I thought, oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I was just like, I wrote it and I would I would write it and hide it under my, in between the base and mattress of my bed so that it would, like, no one could, like how you hide porn, I guess, but it was, so, it was so that no one would find it. But I always put things in code so that in case anyone read it, it wouldn't really, because I wasn't out, I was only like 15, so I didn't. I was scared someone's read it and go, why are you writing about boys in love? Are you gay? So I was really, I was so scared. It was, it, it was, yeah, it was like this. Yeah. So that's what I did. I wrote this story, but when I went to write the script for the film, I didn't re look at the old story. Cause I didn't want to be, I'm a bit OCD. So I didn't want to like commit to everything that I wrote as a 15 year old. So I kind of was like, no, no, I did go back after I wrote the script and just kind of had a quick little read of it. But I, it, you know, there is a massive difference between the two, the film and the, and the original short story. But yeah, I was, I was really proud of it because it was something I did like quietly every night before bed, I would write, write a couple of pages and then hide it away. And I got, up, I remember I got up to 60 pages and I was, but it was like every, there was a lot, there was a gap. There was the paper had lines and there was a space in between. I was so, I don't know, I've never written anything before. So it was a, it was huge. 60 pages was like, could have been a million, you know, like it was, it was a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, since you wrote it, did you always have a vision or a dream of turning your story into a movie? I think, yeah, I, that's what I was doing. I was writing a movie, like I was writing a story that was, to be my first movie that was the goal at 15 i was like this is going to be my first movie and funnily enough or you know i don't know if that's a that's a word or a saying but like you 
like I made a film before Monster Pies that people pretty much ignored. And when Monster Pies came out and was so successful, all the kind of articles and reviews and things kept saying, calling it my first film. Like, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, it's funny because it kind of then, you know, had that stigma of my first film, even though it was my second. <laughs> so. So both William and Mike are interesting and like endearing characters uh, and you explore their relationship in a beautiful way. Um, how did you create the characters and, and do you relate to either of them? I mean, I think Mike was loosely based on me, but it kind of changed. The character was meant to be more comedic like I am and a bit silly and funny. And there is a little bit of that still in there, but I did kind of remove a bit of the humour and we cut a few jokes. Well, I cut a few jokes from the edit. This is back in the day before there was a we when it was just really just me running the whole thing. And, um, and yeah, um, and then I guess, you know, uh, there were a couple of boys based on Will. Is it Will? Yeah. And um, it was an amalgamation of about, I reckon, three guys. Yeah. But actually, I wrote this original story before I'd even fallen in love or met a guy that I liked that, you know, so that it was pre having any experiences with men or having a boyfriend or anything like that. So, but then when I wrote the script screenplay, I was able to draw on like, Oh, that guy in high school and that guy I dated and that guy I fell in love with. And I just kind of stole bits and pieces for Will. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, you know, talking about the, the film itself and, uh, just how you shot it and, and, and kind of the process, did you shoot it chronologically? Uh, no, I can tell you the schedule. I still remember it. We, well, we shot the kids first and I kind of thought it'd be nice to shoot the first thing first, just, you know. And then we did, we went straight into the, I think around November 4th or 6th or something. It's, we would shoot like, you know, Saturday and Sunday while we had the school. And I think we had it for two weekends in a row for the first. So we, yeah. And I think, I know that we, so we did a lot of the school stuff. Uh, classroom so like even the even the ending where Mike goes into the back room with the teacher I don't know I think that might have been even day one like it's so weird because we kind of just we were just like eh. and I yeah and I remember it was just yeah it was crazy crazy first it, it didn't start very well all our extras didn't rock up on on day one the girl playing Janine, she would like, she had her friend and her and her mate just called everyone they knew and got enough people to make it look like a classroom. So it was kind of like uh, Katrina's, you know, this person's cousin and Katrina's friend. And it was like, yeah, so we were scrambling. So we started really late on that. Day. We couldn't do anything until we had extras. And the first thing we shot at the school was the behind the back of Lucas is kind of walking through past the kids with his backpack and just it's just a you know shot but he's just walking going into the club into the school like it's his first day and I think then we went I think the next day we went back we started shooting the stuff in the office when he kind of walks past him in slow motion blah 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 and we couldn't even get the camera to be like fully slow motion it was like only like 30% or something, I don't know. So I was like, just walk, you know, like just walk smoothly. Um, I'll send you the, the schedule. I've still got it in my somewhere safe. I'll just send it. Then you can see like, you know, blah, blah, blah. That'd be super cool. I know actually the last thing I shot was we had the video short film that was, you know, the teacher showed him. And we were, and it was just, wow, something wasn't working. And it was like, there wasn't enough footage. And we didn't really plan for that. We, we, we did and we didn't. And it was like, um, we really should have gone and spent a day just preparing, you know, half a day, just getting more footage for that video, that short film. And it was meant to be longer and we just had to cut it down. And then I just said to Lucas, um, come to my house. And luckily he didn't look too different. And I bought, these blue pieces of paper and I I 
wrote, you know, love and this and that. And we, and we had more, but we didn't use all of them. And, and yeah, we just, it's just, I filmed that with the digital camera, the same digital camera he was using in the film. I just filmed him holding that up and then we, you know, threw it in. And that was the last thing we shot. And I remember, and then I just, oh, I'll have to set, share this with you, but there's a bit where I'm like, said to Lucas, that's it, we're done. And, and he just went like this, like, yay. And I, I've got a screen grab of that somewhere. So I'll have to find it and send it to you. That, yeah, anything would be awesome. Thank you. Um, do you have a, okay. So th this is a two part question. Do you, do you have a favorite scene that you shot? And then uh, was there one that was the most challenging? Look, um, I, I think my favorite scene was the, the drive-in scene when they're watching the movie. I've just, every time I watch it, I just think it's, it's perfect. And it's, and, and we had so much trouble because the, the projector we had, which I still have to this day, we still didn't know how to put power to it. There was no, we couldn't figure out where the power source was. And uh, so we couldn't get it to turn on. Um, so when you see it, uh, it moving, it was actually just us with the Super 8 film. And I'm just like pulling it. And as you're, pu as we're pulling it, you c it turns, but it's not turning because it's on. It's just, yeah. But we had another digital projector on set that was projecting the image on the sheet in the driveway. And I just love, I just love all the, and you know, and the film they're watching is a, sh is a short film I never finished which was like this like vampire film that I just, you know, and I thought, well, you know, Monster Pies, they talk about horror stuff. This is good. We'll just throw this little horror movie on the screen. So, and it had full moon and, and we called it something moon. And so that was it. And then, um, but I think the thing, the day I really enjoyed, which was, it was the hardest day, but it was fun, was the school dance scene because it, I was just, running around and literally ran to every like if I had to go here here I would not just walk I would run to a space to get an actor or do something or shoot something and I got it all done so yeah actually early I think I, should, I finished at four <laughs> um but it was great it was and 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 I think I don't know I think I just like being run off my feet sometimes just because it just the day goes quicker and and it was, um, we had a lot of extras that day and all the costumes you see, I supplied all the costumes, pretty much most, like 90% of them. And I had these, I had these racks. I don't even know how I got them to set, but I had these racks. And then I put all these costumes I had been, cause I was working in an op shop, or like the second hand store. And I was collecting stuff as it was coming in and buying it like super cheap. So, and it was all just retro old ugly stuff. And, you know, that's kind of some of the costumes you've seen on, on that school dance, at the school dance was what I was supplying. For. And so what happened, we got there and I said to everyone, go to the racks, find something, put it on, that's your costume. And that's how we, how we did that scene. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and yeah, two parts of the question, I don't think I answered the second part. No, uh, it was just what was the most challenging scene to shoot? Uh, it'd be the school dance for sure. It would be the school dance? Okay. Uh, and the pool scene because, uh, you know, shooting in water <laughs> and when Will throws Mike in the water, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, and then I... he bombs, yeah. So Mike, so when they, we did that, we, had only, we could only do it in one take because we didn't have enough time on set with the swimming pool we hired, like we hired the location for the an hour or something. And we just didn't have the time to have them get wet and then dry them off and get them to do it again. So I just, that's why that shot isn't a wide because I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to stuff up. So I just said, all right, guys, you got one take throw him in the water and that's what's in the movie that's a good yeah no i i absolutely love that scene so as an aspiring filmmaker myself i'm curious how did you get your start in film you you um, mentioned film school earlier yeah i mean i was making films from 16 i was doing it from home and and then you know in high school media class and you know and every i was always with the camera around school 
you know. And um, and um, and then yeah, I went to film school and learning how to put a crew together and all that stuff. But I was I was kind of not really getting too guided from them. I was just, I was always doing my thing on my own and outsourcing people and cameramen and actors and stuff. And then yeah, I think it was like my mid twenties. I was like, you know what? I got to do a feature. Like I can't. I kind of need to, you know. There's only so much you can get from a short, you know, as a filmmaker. So after I shot three big shorts on Super 16 mil, which was a big deal back then, um, yeah, I just thought um, I'll just do it. So, but I just, I mean, I have a twin brother. We just, we always watch movies growing up and I was always very talkative as a kid, as a kid. <laughs> Not anymore. No, I've changed so much. Um, and I, um, I think I was just always like telling stories and it was, you know, and then I kind of liked writing and writing stories and, and, and yeah, so that's what, what happened. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so how did it feel for uh, your work to be the first ever Australian film to win best feature at the Melbourne Queer Film Festival? Yeah, it was Look, I didn't know I was the first at the time um, until they rang me up and said, actually, when they rang me up to say I won, I was like, oh my God. And then I think it was a few months, it was like someone kept questioning me and going, you know, I think you're the only Australian film um, to ever win. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so, and I think the festival had been running for 23 years or something like that and yeah so it was just I kind of broke this thing but and what was really cool like the year after me another Australian film won and then the year after that another Australian film won so I'm like I was like oh I, I I just got in there because if I had released you know a few years later I wouldn't have had that you know that title but it was I mean a it's always an honor to win an award and I, I had never won an award at that point um and um yeah so it was just it was um to, and then to break and to be that first australian film to do that was especially in melbourne because i'm from melbourne and i'm queer <laughs> to win that festival but then be you know do that that was really that was an honor so yeah awesome i uh i'm glad that makes me happy uh, you have a new TV series coming out soon called Single Out. You sent me that little trailer, which looked awesome. Yes, uh, the first sneak peek that no one has seen yet. I know, I feel special. Can you can you tell me a little bit about the series and the difference between directing a movie and a TV series? Oh, God. I thought it was going to be easier. <laughs> I thought TV is easier, <laughs> but it's not. There's no difference. It's still... You know, still long hours, still directing and me doing everything because I don't have enough crew and stuff. But it's, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, yeah. I think the editing process was where I found it was very different because they were 20-ish, 20, 20 21, 22-minute slots. And, you know, and I was trying to, like, put together this story and but then have to have to have an ending every so often and, the show is like non-linear at points, you know, different episodes kind of like flash back and forward. And, and um, I'd never done non-linear stuff before. So I, that was you know, like a different experience for me. And, um, and, you know, and we kind of started experimenting with like, Oh, we could try this and this and this. And um, so it was really, yeah, the editing process was probably hard, like where I felt something was really different to features, you know. As you continue to have experience directing and producing, would you change anything about your film, ten, like now that it's been 10 years later? If I had known it was going to be as big as it ended up being, like, and it was still going to be watched, like, you know, from people like yourself, ten, you know, so many years later, maybe I should have saved more money for it or in, gotten, like, a better sound mix or something, but... It is what it is. I th sometimes I think, you know, when you don't have money and they always, people, I hear this story all the time, but when you don't have a lot of money, it forces you to be more creative. And um, yeah, 
Um, and there were times where like the camera guy couldn't, couldn't come, couldn't shoot. And I wanted to do some things and I just said, look, show me how to use this camera and I'll, I'll do it. And so I, I shot the, you know, when the boys, are, it's like a montage where the boys are like hanging out in a clothing, like a store and it's got big umbrellas and they get the, he gets the bracelet put on his hand. Looking back, I should have, some shots should have been more in focus. My last question is, so, you know, again, 10 years later, what about your film are you the most proud of? Oh God, I guess I'm proud that I'm, people are still watching it, I guess, um, because when I made it, I, I didn't want make it just for the Melbourne people. I did, I did say I wanted it to be everywhere. Um, but at that point, I, I never had a distribution deal. I didn't, I've never had a film released around the world, but I knew it was something that needed to be as far as, you know, go everywhere it can go. And the TLA releasing who distributed it for the last um, eight years, um, they have, were really great. They had gotten it in every little corner and um, um, yeah. So I was really proud of how many people got you. And all the, the messages I get, um, um, just people telling me how much it has meant to them. Um, like I did secretly think if, if I saw this film as a gay man, I would have loved it. So I thought, well, then they should love it too. And, but at the same time, I was, it was only my second film. I really wasn't sure if it was any good. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So who bought it for you for your birthday? My parents, my parents did. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm really grateful. I have, I have supporting parents. Uh, it was, it was a process with them, but they are very loving and supporting now. How did they know to get that for you? Like I had seen it. So I had actually, so I've never actually watched the, the DVD version because I watched it, um, on Amazon prime. Yeah. Yes. I watched it on Amazon prime. Is it, is in America, is it, is it like a free Amazon Prime thing or is it something you have to rent or some, or buy or something? Uh, uh, I actually do think I had to rent it. I yeah. may have had to rent it, um, which I don't know if any of that goes to you. I hope something goes to you. No, a little bit, yeah. I think um, I got a percentage. <laughs> well, good, good, yeah. You got some of my pennies <laughs> or <laughs> I don't know. But it was, yeah, no, I watched it on Amazon and um, it was, I was just so moved. I wrote that review immediately after um after watching it and i you know i kind of just wanted to like like it touched my heart and i wanted to like like have it re uh, recorded you know i just so um and and it's kind of like logged in my journal in a way there and so i i just my birthday was coming up a month later my mom and dad asked me what i wanted um and i only asked for a, a couple of things and I think I got like maybe three movies and um because I'm a big film person so whenever it's Christmas or my birthday my mom's like well what would you like and I'm like movies and I I really wanted that one so I I asked that that they get that but I I it was an awesome birthday gift. I literally I remember how excited I was because like I wasn't like sure how easy it would be to get on like DVD and like there it was on DVD um, and I have it still um, and I have the I have the, the DVD in my in my room so oh, that in my room. that's so cool I've yeah I've had people say oh we I pirated the movie and then I loved it so much I went and bought the DVD I'm like oh. okay I forgive you yeah well uh, I really appreciate it Lee I, I it, it means the world to me because I I really am trying to, to go to film school um, for to hopefully get an MFA, a Master of Fine Arts uh, in film production. Uh, don't don't know um, where that'll be yet, but I'm I'm still figuring that out. And I really would like to to kind of follow in your footsteps and and do something like, um, you know, Monster Pies. I I have, you know, I grew up in a in a Christian school, um, like a like a Baptist Christian school where they um, expelled gay people. Um, so. I would be interested in kind of exploring my own, a little bit of my own like story and, and um, you know, just kind of sharing that. And, and so 
that's that's kind of my process you know i've i've films such as yours you know really have inspired me to kind of create something like that of my own so it means a lot to be able to reach out um to you that you you actually took the time to to ask me you know to to do this with you um so thank you for your film um thank you for all the work that you do and thank you for this this interview well thank you i'm so glad you wanted to do this because it you know it's our anniversary and um yeah, and I thought I'd do something special for some of the fans out there who have all been really lovely and supportive and who have continued to even support me on like Single Out and some of my other films. So, um, yeah, thank you again. <laughs> Absolutely. You got a fan for life in me. Thank you. <laughs>